Dan Wiggington, geoengineeringwatch.org, George Nori. And George Nori back with Dane Wiggington as we talk about geoengineering and climate engineering as well. It's amazing. Don't they realize they're also doing it to themselves, Dane? Well, certainly that question is one that many people ask. And what I would say is this is, you know, there's an addict realize they're killing themselves when they continue with their habit. And they don't what, care. But addiction is more profound than the addiction to saying. power, George. And, and what else Isn't are they it? doing to themselves? They've detonated 2,000 nuclear bombs all over the globe. That contam contaminated every living organism on the planet. We have Fukushima that may be an extinction-level event by itself. No technology to fix it. No insight. They're building 60 world. more nuke plants right now. So I would argue again that we're not dealing with sanity. We're not dealing with individuals that think in any sense on the long-term horizon. And quite simply, we have many examples of what they've already done to themselves. So the, the equation is clear. To the phones we go. Wayne is truck driving in Indiana. Welcome to the show. Hi, Wayne. Hello. Uh, with world. everything going on up way up in the atmosphere, and everybody knows that not too car far fumes up, Wayne. and truck exhausts and everything are bad for you, is there any correlation uh, that what we put out down here, especially in diesels, because of to the new diesel extent, exhaust Wayne. fluid, that uh, it is having an effect sort of the same way at a lower level? Oh, well, that's a great My question, Wayne. And one thing in the diesel exhaust fluid is urea. You know that, correct? It's, and oh. we know that urea, synthetic urea, is in climate engineering chemical ice nucleating patents. So it's an interesting correlation you make. Are the are the emissions from other sources of human activity, vehicles, factories, is that a, is that an part of the equation for what's happening to the climate? Certainly. Again, every form of human activity that alters the Earth's natural processes or the Earth's natural energy equilibrium is a form of geoengineering. But the intentional uh, attempt to derail these systems is the biggest factor of all. But but your question is very valid and in, in, in the on the subject of urea, again, especially synthetic urea, which is what the, the new diesel fluids are, um, yes, we are trying to connect those dots because it, it is certainly something we're, we're finding in the sampling of frozen precipitation, like the ice storms and so forth. Wayne, if you're a truck driver, you know how many ice storms there are now, right? Too many. Yeah, too many. We have storms being now. fed with moisture right out of the Gulf of Mexico. Since when did winter storms originate from the Gulf of Mexico? They're chemically nucleating this moisture. They need a lot of moisture to do this. And so you have ice storm transition zones as this nucleated material is, is hitting the ground and setting up before it forms a, quote, snowflake, which looks nothing like a, a historically nucleated snowflake. It was big balls of cotton looking snow falls at above normal f or temp or above freezing temperatures so very very different i don't think anybody can argue the weather is completely different than what it once was why are these storms so violent and so intense you can't these control days? It. well it depends on where for example in northern california our storms are not violent at all in fact where we live they're they're uh, very uh, non-events compared to 15 years ago. So it depends on where it's at. Now, on the nucleating process, George, we're seeing more intense low-pressure zones, the bomb cyclones that now we hear about that we never heard about 10 years ago. The term didn't even exist. So we have the bomb cyclones, and it appears now because the atmosphere is warming so much that wind energy is needed to carry the particulates and the ice nucleating uh, materials far enough to help further the what's called an endothermic reaction an energy absorbing reaction so yes we are seeing what appears to be an attempt to make uh, these circulations more uh, intense and that seems to be a desperate attempt to um, carry out the engineered winter events and your listeners can search the engineering winter section at geogwatch.org and learn all about this okay back to the phone so you go walter in pennsylvania hello walt hi george Good day with about, cooling. Yeah, Great about a week ago, you had zones. Dr. Tim Ball on, and uh, needless to say, I think he was the direct opposite of what Dane has been saying. Uh, George, I think neither uh, Dr. Ball or Dane is 100% uh, correct. I think, oh, as I guy. said last week, I think we're that mankind is. Uh, yeah, is, uh, right. No, we are not fucking correct. He's been researching and, uh, sadly, intensively we are for, as what, 15 years? Now, I think it's just common sense. This uh, guy comes off the cuff. That the human population of this planet yeah. cannot increase. Generally speaking. As uh, Dr. Tim Ball uh, 
made the statement uh, when you had him on about mm -hmm. a year ago that no. he believes that uh, the Earth can safely sustain 28 billion people, which I think is a preposterous uh, notion. So I think to Dane, uh, I was going to uh, state on uh, Dr. Ball if if we can ever get him to actually engage in an equal time debate, fact for fact on the air, which he has repeatedly refused to do with me despite having being invited from a number of national radio show hosts so perhaps at some point he will agree to such an exchange and we'll ferret out who has their facts right you, you, you both talk about climate engineering though you you both come to that understanding where do you two differ mm, i don't to my knowledge i haven't heard him all state that maybe he is now no he is he, okay. he has yes. um well uh, where we differ george is the notion that um the human activity is not warming the planet and again we have statistically and, I, and i'm not an al gore fan carbon credits are a sham the environmental groups are behaving like complete hypocrites in their total denial of climate engineering because they want they don't want to lose their 501 nonprofits, and we know that because our attorneys have spoken to their attorneys but as far as th this notion that there's nothing to worry about the planet's not warming um or not warming catastrophically i i mean statistically the data is overwhelming. I mean, we are on track for what's called Venus syndrome. And so these, these narratives by a certain select few individuals, um, Lord Christopher Monckton also being one, um, it simply does not hold up to the data. And I, I, I would welcome an equal time uh, moderated on-air debate with any of these individuals and all of them, Monckton, Ball, have all repeatedly refused to engage in such a fact-finding debate on air with me. Interesting. That would be a, a great debate. Maybe we can see if we can pull that together. Let's pull I'll it together, show George. Uh, let us go next to Bill in the state of Washington. Hello, William. Go ahead. Hey, Dane. Hey, George. I was, um, Hi, I'm reading this book called The Sixth, the Sixth Extinction, and um, there's an opening quote from Professor E.O. Wilson, who's an eminent uh, biologist and naturalist, uh, uh, he's an American, but he, but when you're talking, you make me think of that quote. He's talking about the irony of organic evolution, and he says that life, at the instant of achieving self-understanding through the mind of man, also doomed some of its most beautiful creatures, or creations. And I can't help but wonder if, you know, Homo sapien, the great tool maker, all right, if we're not just going to make, you know, build ourselves into oblivion? Well, again, those are great questions. And statistically right, speaking, yeah. on the current course, uh, we face certain near-term planetary omnicide. That's a mathematical, statistical fact. So, and on your question, it's very profound also in that if we look at all other species on the planet, they work symbiotically for the overall good, for the equilibrium of the planet. The only one that doesn't is us. So that certainly fits with that equation. Let's go to Lori in Redding, California, west of the Rockies. Hello, Lori. Go ahead. Hello, George. I wanted to thank you so much the other night. You were sharing very profoundly about how you kind of informed your dad that you weren't really going to follow through on the family dental. Oh, yeah. Track. <laughs> Change that the subject, was so Lori. touching, George, because there's a lot of people that need to really make their own decisions, and this fits tonight's topic. If there's people that have... You know, they're, they're family members that want to join the military, and they're very, you know, concerned about that. Or their babies are going to be vaccinated. There's so much controversy and challenges that to have you share that was really important. And I, and I thank your whole team, Lisa and Tommy. You've got a great team, George. We sure yeah, do. Thanks thank for bringing you. Dane we on. sure do. If I can mention two points quickly. Um, I think you should bring them on every night. We are in the West Coast. Uh, possibly round two of uh, more of these uh, catastrophic fires, the fire nados, and all the rest. So we're yep. kind of bracing ourselves emotionally the as we watch our friends in Australia in their third to fourth month of this disaster. And how people are, and this is where maybe Dan could mention, about the how they're using all their arsonists or they're the homeless the people, transient people control. that are just trying to keep warm, or it's the bark fields, or there's it's poor fuel uh, management of the forest or pg and e there's all these um people Bogus and entities story, to blame but they're not addressing flag. what dane has been suggesting for the longest time is the geoengineering factor that puts all of these things into place so you can blame quote unquote nature time permitting dane if you can mention what's going on with the zip lips silent cowards like the faith-based 
churches or the environmental groups, mainstream media. I know we've got a few people that have billboards out there, but you've done 233 shows of Global Alert News. So uh, uh, wherever you want to go, I, I just Global really Alert, appreciate Alert News, uh, watching your on, fortitude, Dane. You're on awesome. YouTube. Thank you, Lori. If I can I'll answer very quickly, George, what Lori stated, the cause of ignition for these fires is a separate subject completely. And we can speculate on those causes of ignition. But the fact that climate engineering is setting the template for this to happen Satellite is absolutely lasers. indisputable. And the... The level of burn downs, if we look at the Siber Siberian forest, George, when they, they blame this on excess fuel loading because we're not cutting down enough trees, that is patently false. Forests in Siberia that haven't been touched for hundreds of thousands of years in the last 10 years from 2000 to 2010, fire burn rate went up 1,000%. Wow. So, again, untouched forests rate change dramatically increase. over what they've been for fire hundreds storms. of thousands of years. So, quite simply, there's a factor that we're not being told about, and that factor is climate engineering. That much percent? That's yep. huge. One thousand percent, ten it. times more. We've got Mike in uh, Clarkston, Georgia. Welcome the to the program, Mike. Go ahead. Morning, George and Dan. How you doing? Morning. Mike. Good. Um, you were talking about uh, walking out the door and it's cold outside, and you don't think about the heat anywhere else. When we had our huge freeze, I, uh, the first freeze it was either November or December. Here in the country, that was when Australia started having their triple-digit heat wave, and that was before all the fires the down there. Climate you were talking about outside uh, Tennessee, uh, some uh, issues in Tennessee. I was wondering if you did any work in uh, south, southwest uh, North Carolina. All over. Well, we we should be captured there. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Chattanooga. And it kind of, because of the mountains and the bowl that it creates, it kind of has its own weather to start with. What we recorded over Tennessee was three C-17 Globemasters, U.S. military uh, aircraft, and they were uh, massive spray dispersions flying in formations, and your listeners can look at that on the homepage of GRGWatch.org. And to, to also reiterate what Lori Stead said before, it appears from what we know as the schedule weather that comes through NOAA that's created ultimately by Raytheon, it appears that the schedule weather at this point is that they're again going to set the template for massive northern hemisphere burndowns again once summer comes uh, to this direction. So there's, there's a number of reasons why we feel that they're facilitating this, and, and your listeners can learn about that, George, under the Engineering Wildfire section at geoengineeringwatch.org. Geoengineeringwatch.org linked up at coast to coast -am .com. Sophie's with us in LA. Hey, Sophie, go ahead. Oh, hi, George. Hi. Uh, hi. Um, hi, Dane. Um, thank you for taking my call. This is a very um, sad information, and I just, well, I want to make a comment and then a question, and I'll take my answer up the air. Okay. I just, you know, I've had health sad issues over the last five years that I never had before, and one of the things that came up in my blood uh, test was aluminum, which I, doesn't make sense. I don't drink a lot of sodas out of cans or anything. Um, and then just the huge rate Not of aluminum. cancer that we've had in the last decade or two. Um, I wonder if it has anything to do with what you're talking about. And then um, is my my question uh, is, is there any hope and what can we do about it? And I'll take my answer up here. Thank you, Sophie. That's the most important question of all. Can we, is there any chance we will know the planet we have once known? Statistically, mathematically, no. That planet is gone. The equilibrium periods after former such events that happened, again, at a fraction of the speed. This is happening at equilibrium periods of 10 to 20 million years. The planet we've known, the hospitable planet we've known is done. Can we salvage any part of Earth's life support systems? That remains to be seen, and that depends on what we collectively do or don't do. And I would encourage people, one quick statement, George, to use the science terms when they're conveying this issue to someone else. Avoid the Kim's Trails term unless you're talking amongst friends. That term leads straight to conspiracy theory and hoax. Use climate engineering, geoengineering, solar radiation management, and pass on credible printed data. We do offer that at geoengineeringwatch.org on our homepage. Very compelling printed data at our approximate cost of producing and shipping that's much more effective to waking others. If we can bring this issue to the full light of day, wake our military brothers and sisters up as to what they're participating in, we have a chance of exposing and stopping these programs. If we can do that, we'll have taken a quantum leap in the right direction. Do they ever have any revolts from the pilots, let's say, assuming they're not drones? None we know of except for it's perhaps dark, let's think about man. the aircraft that mysteriously just went missing what, what two or three years ago that took them how many a month to find that you know they just as if they don't know where these aircraft are with transponders was that some sort of defection we don't know 
we certainly don't know that and uh you know i'm sure that anybody in that kind of position to know what they're doing uh would be monitored to an incredible level we are communicating with some commercial aircraft pilots um, off the record they absolutely know this is going on they're leaving our materials around and in, in uh pilot lunch rooms and so forth well, they so, see it they see it happening oh yeah absolutely we got a call from two uh gulfstream pilots you know the, the gulfstream private aircraft they fly very yeah. important people these aircraft the, the temperatures were so hot above forty thousand feet they're nearly 40 degrees above normal the air couldn't carry the aircraft they went into forced automatic pilot descents these guys were extremely alarmed um, you know, they, they can't hide this elephant in the sky much longer, George. We, we need everybody to help us bring this to light. It's, it is the priority, we, the battle we must win or all is lost. All right, my friend. Dane, keep in touch with us, okay? Thank you so much for your voice in this battle, George. Absolutely.